Hi guys, so I'm going to read Giant Size Invaders number one. So this is a review request I had to do some Invaders comics reviewer request. But Captain America, Human Torch, and Submariner in a fury-filled first issue. In the darkest days of World War II, five fighting mad superheroes battle the hordes of Hitler. Stanley presents The Coming of the Invaders, featuring America's greatest superheroes of World War II in grim battle against the hordes of Hitler. Roy Thomas, ed writer-editor. Frank Robbins, artist. Flint Vince Coletta, inker. Petra Goldberg, colorist. John Costanza, letterer. With special thanks to John Romita. Date, er, so part one, A Captain Called America. And this issue is dedicated to the real McCoys, Stan Lee, Joe Simon, and Jack Kirby. So date, December 22nd, 1941. Time, 3 o'clock a.m. Scene, sudden chaos for traitors. Okay, Nazis, it's the end of the line. Everybody off. Phew, phew, check, check. Here's a special delivery message for you, fat man. Get away from that plunger, whip. It is Captain America. Uh, oh, I think that's all. Okay. Can't you bun types get anything right? The Marquis said, Captain America and Bucky. Or Bucky and Captain America. If you're part of the Bobby Bop Sox set. Thanks a heap, partner. Us sidekicks need all the good press we can get. Don't mention it, little buddy. Little bitty buddy. Just don't forget me when I'm red, white, and gray. Fat chance, Cap. Of course, first we gotta live long enough for you to collect social security. Which means getting rid of the gun on old Otto here. You got a point, Mr. B. Besides, this rat just tried to blow up an entire... Besides, this rat just tried to blow up an entire shipyard. To make life easier for Uncle Adolph's bully boys. And that just naturally makes me mad. Zoom! Not much fight left in you, eh, Heine? Somehow you Nazis turn into shy retiring types. As soon as somebody knocks your gun out of your... Huh? What up, Doc? But find you, kid. More jokers making like the shadow. Don't know where they came from, but we're not licked yet. Just say the word, Cap, and we'll... Hold up a minute, fellas. We believe in you already. We're all on the same side, see? Holy cow, Cap. He's FBI. Well, I'll be a... How did you boys get wind of this sabotage operation so fast? We didn't. We were tracking you two about something else entirely. But thanks all the same. Something else? Do you remember Dr. A Anderson? I said, do you remember a Dr. Anderson? Anderson, 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 Anderson. But you no longer here, do you, Captain America? For the agent's unexpected words have stirred memories deep within your star-spangled breast. Memories of the most fateful day in your life, in Steve Rogers' life, and perhaps of the life of this very nation. Was it really only a year ago when that a top-secret meeting took place within the hollowed halls of the White House itself? How are you coming with Operation Rebirth, General Phillips? We're almost ready, Mr. President. As soon as the chemical is perfected, we move. Yes, but how soon is that, Jen? Right now, Mr. President. Dr. Anderson. This, sir, uh, is our Director of Projects, Mr. President. Please forgive his rashness. I asked him to let me know the minute that... Then let him speak, General. I have a feeling I'm going to like what I hear. Thank you, sir. The chemical is perfected, gentlemen, and I suggest we proceed at once. The time has come at last. There's nothing more to be said. I wish you all Godspeed. Soon afterward, a speeding auto turned down a little-known side street in our nation's capital. They are waiting for us. Inside! Uh, you were not present as Dr. Anderson led the two generals, now in his civilian clothes into the dim-lit curio shop. Yet you've heard what happened next. I believe you are expecting us. I expect nobody. Identify yourselves to my satisfaction. Or die. 
I commend your caution, Agent R. The password is rebirth. Shall occur this night. Night. Say no more. You will all follow me. It's hard to believe that this Glome shop is the most important piece of real estate in the free world today. Silence. There must be no unnecessary talk. Nothing must distract us from the great experiment. Reaching the top floor, the small party walked through a hidden doorway and into one of the most completely equipped laboratories in the world. Take your places, gentlemen. We have 30 seconds. Some of our nation's highest officials are on hand to witness our experiment. At last I can divest myself of this disguise. The die is cast, and nothing can change things now. Don't be shocked, gentlemen. What you are about to see will make you forget all these melodramatic precautions. Bring in the volunteer. It's taken us months to find the proper 4F specimen, one whose body we believe will react properly to Dr. Reinstein. I think that name got... Yeah, that name, that name got changed to Erkstein later. The creator of the super soldier formula was Abraham Erkstein later. I guess uh, up until now it was still runs. Oh, oh, wait, no, it is. No, I didn't see that. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, that's a code name apparently. I just saw the uh, text, sorry. My, my brain died. A uh, new tissue building chemical. You can drop the Dr. Reinstein tag now, Sims. We've no need for phony sounding code names any longer. The subject is approaching. Dr. Erkskine. Dr. Erkskine. Even the big project with bigwigs had used the code name Reinstein for this man. This great genius, whom the world believed dead in a recent auto cat crash. Step forward, Rogers. And you did, nervously. It's true, and so you stepped slowly. Silently into the unknown. It couldn't be a mere twelve months since you were merely Steve Rogers. Too puny. Too sickly. To be accepted by the army. Yet chosen from hundreds of similar volunteers. Actually, I think this is Cap talking to himself. Because I can see by his eye. So they told you because of your core courage, your intelligence. And your willingness to risk death for your country. If the experiment should fail. You must drink this quickly before the chemicals lose their potency. Good luck, my boy. Uh, gentlemen, if we have heard, Rogers will be dead within seconds. For he... Oh, gentlemen, if we have heard, Rogers will be dead within seconds. For he is drinking the strongest chemical potion ever created by man. But if we succeed, he will be the first of an army of fighting men, such as the world has ever known. His reflexes, his physical condition, will be second to none. The project has been so well guarded that only Dr. Erkstein knows the formula, and he has it committed to, to memory. There are no written notes for enemy agents to steal. But if we're successful, we'll produce the potion in quantity, given to all our fighting men. It would have to peacetime uses, also. It could mean an end to virtually all diseases. Look, something's happening to Rogers. He He's changing right before our eyes. Everything spinning around. I'm blacking out. I'm saying, uh, got to. It's working. Don't give up, son. Hold on. This is the moment of crisis. You must survive it. I, I'm trying. But everything's so dark, so... Wait. Now I feel power surging th through me. My power is getting... Body's getting larger, stronger as if millions of cells were forming at an incredible speed. That is precisely what is happening, son. And now the process is complete. You are the crowning achievement of all my years of working, of dreaming, the first of a corps of super-soldiers, whose mental and physical ability will make them a terror to spies and saboteurs. We shall call you Captain America, because like you, America shall gain the strength and the will to safeguard our shores. But despite the unprecedented security measures, the dread specter of Nazism appeared at that moment. A Gestapo spy whose name you later learned was Kruger. Eckstein, you and your accursed experiment shall both die in this room! At the later date, you could have reached Erkstein in time, shielded his body with your own. But you didn't know you could do that yet, did you? 
down with democracy, down with freedom. The Third Reich shall last, live forever. Prove to Heil Hitler. The next moment, shattering glass momentarily distracted the assassin, but it was already too late. Shh! Take cover! I'll get that! Save yourself, my boy. Save... Uh. No, stay back. This is my job. It's what I was created to do. Oh, and he says, Dr. Eckstein! And it was the first test of your new speed, your new power. Power, you finally fully realize, even if you, as you reach the now terrified killer. Truth! Dr. Erkskine's dead, and his formula has died with him. And then you were like a kid with a new toy. There can be no more like me. A new toy, and a deadly one. But I shall fight, Buck, for all those who might have been. You know in that moment that if you didn't curb your strength, control it, you'd kill him. You let up, and Kruger broke free. No, not that way, you fool. You're running towards an electric omniverter. You'll stay away. You'll never get me. I am a Nazi. I am supreme. I... So you say, yes, yes, I remember Dr. Anderson. And Dr. Erkskine. Bucky knows the story, too. Well, here's one thing you didn't know, Cap. If I may be so informal, that's the reason we've been looking for you. By now, Dr. Anderson may be dead. Dead? How? It's a long story. He's at the Walter Reed Hospital, and, and that's where we're going. Right now. Coming, Bucky? You gotta ask? I'm not quite sure what's going on, but there's one thing I do know. If some of Adolf's master race are responsible for what's happened to Anderson, Captain America will avenge him! Part 2. Enter the Human Torch And introducing, direct from Berlin, the maniacal menace of Masterman. The staff of a major hospital see many unique sights. They are witness to history, a Greek chorus to humanity's tragedy, the midwife of, of its shining hope. And yet, even as these are moved... By the red, white, and blue sight, they see this late night hour. Gee, Captain America, can I get your app autograph, Cap? And my sister thinks Bucky's just the cutest. Not now, miss. S sorry. Cap's usually so friendly. He'd sign an autograph for anybody this side of the red skull. I never seen him so tense, so worried. Then entering the heavily guarded top security ward. Wilson? In here, Mr. Stewart. The doctors say Anderson's well enough to talk, for a few minutes anyway. Dr. Anderson, thank God you're all right, sir. But what happened? Nobody's told. I Cap. Long time no see. Don't blame the FBI boy, so I asked them to let me clue you in. A lot's happened since we last met, hasn't it? The thing that matters most, though, is what happened just two weeks ago. On a quiet Sunday morning in Hawaii, when the whole blamed Japanese Air Force came streaking down out of the sky to bomb a place called Pearl Harbor, not to mention Hickam Field, where our underplane for Air Force was caught flat-footed on the ground. You guessed it, Cap. I was there when the President delivered his most important message ever to the Congress. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a day which will live in infamy. And so we declared war on the Japanese Empire. And if we had any doubts about our relations with his Axis ally, they were quickly clarified. Roosevelt alone, backed by the millionaires and the Jews, is responsible for the Second World War. And that is one of the nicer things Der Fuhrer had to say about FDR in his declaration of war, Roy. But why am I telling all you this, Cap? You know these events, every American does. They're etched forever, in the national memory. My pardon, this things began two nights ago, at the research center, where I was checking some new findings. I was told that security measures were foolproof, but then I'd heard the same that other night a year ago, and I'm afraid that history repeated itself. When I awoke, I was in a jeep, bounding along through the rugged hills of Virginia, heading for an apparently abandoned farm. Cap, if we learn nothing else from this night, uh, it must be that no place... 
or actually, I, I don't know what order that was. Uh, yeah, whatever. So no place in America is safe from the traitors and saboteurs who want to knock the U.S. out of this war before she's truly in it. They'll stop at nothing, Cap. Nothing. They worked fan frantically during the past weeks to turn an eight innocent barn, lonely-looking grain silo, into an armed headquarters for spies and murderers. The fake, M fake MPs now donned their real uniforms as Nazi guards, and we began our ascent within the gloomy, shallowed silo. Reaching the top level, I suddenly gazed upon a cruel, piercing eyes, a mock stance grown of love of power and a carefully studied arrogance. I heard a voice which did not even attempt to hide its Teutonic origins. Ah, I have looked forward to this moment, Her Dr. Anderson. Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Colonel Gleekund. Gleekund, German for Warhound, and this devil gloried in the very sound of it. I said little in the next few minutes, but bided my time and tried to pretend I was unimpressed by the formidable technology I witnessed within that unpossessing silo. And all of this we have assembled on the, the very noses of you Americanish swine, with the help of the brain drain, of course. Brain drain? Is that a man or a disease? It is not your concern, her doctor. And now, for the reason we brought you here. That's when Krieg Hunts sprung his big surprise on me. And that moment, I couldn't even pretend to be shocked. Not to be shocked. Good Lord! A man floating inside a transparent vat of chemicals. And he's breathing. He's alive. Ja, und Heil And thus is not just any man, but an overman, an ubermensch. Behold the master man. Did I say that Krieghund had cold, piercing eyes? There is nothing compared to those which now glared horribly down at me. Once, no doubt, he was a man, like other men. But now, he was personification of the lurid Nietzschean nightmare which the Nazis wished to unleash upon the already reeling world. Yet, obviously, I still held a trump card of some kind, and Krieghund soon admitted what I was. I have tried to duplicate the formula and ofulate Dr. Erskine and have come very close, but you, her doctor, may possess the final key to unlock his secret. That's insane, and you know it. Dr. Erskine never wrote down his formula. And when he died, killed by one of you, his secret died with him. If we can't recreate it yet, neither can you. Perhaps not. Yet... We know that you were closest to Dr. Arkstein, that he often confided in you. And soon we will know whatever you do. Bring the siphon! Obviously, an early bird version of the siphon in this month's Hulk. That's kind of a, that's kind of a sneaky way to advertise one of the comics. That's a pretty sneaky way to do that. But what, Rory? One if the brain drains more charming devices, nine. This machine will pull memories from you. Memories you never even knew you had. And we will learn them now. Next came pain. Pain which luckily I can't even recall now. Yet the machine did probe my psyche. Siphoned off what it found there. Tell that I cursed the day I met Abraham Erskine. The Nazis worked frantically for 24 hours, then... There is no more time! Put the chemicals! Awake, Master Man! Awake, do you hear me? Ja, I hear you, Colonel. But Master Man moves when Master Man reels! <laughs> Next, in an after a savage, brutal outburst, as if testing his newfound powers, the demonic, blood-blonde beast... Unle unloosed an awesome display of destruction, which unnerved even his Nazi creators. And I learned why Krieghund had never let go of his whip. Ekund, master man, come to your senses at once. You are created to do our beating, not to smash our laboratory. I was created to be myself. You are but human, and man is something to be surpassed, even if I have surpassed him. I, the Ubermensch, the Masterman.
The two Nazis faced each other tensely, then suddenly. Her kernel at heat detectors indicate two objects approaching fast from the sky. The Psy Hylers would have been more distressed if they had realized at that moment that the attackers were the Human Torch and his young ally Toro, a fact they only learned when twin fireballs abruptly melted through the silo's reinforced outer walls. Bzzz. And pandemonium resigned with, reigned within. Torch Toro! Thank goodness! You two happened by? As May West once said, Doc, goodness has nothing to do with it. We're part of your security, a part you didn't even know about. And neither did the boys in the bund here. Dwork. Gott in Himmel. Mine bullets, they just melt when they hit the flames. Bah, you are all weaklings. A disgrace to the Third Reich. Boom, 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 boom. That, that's so? You want to play a few rounds yourself, Fritz? I'll just torch. Oh, I'll just torch my fireballs. Don't stop this guy. Nothing stops me. And my name is not Fritz, but Masterman. Well, I'll not. In the few moments before I kill you both. Toro! Well, well done. The force of your blow put out their flames. Now me and Luga will chew over my dead body. Kriegun's wild bullet accidentally finished the damage begun by Master Man and the torch's fireballs. And that's when he turned on me. Shrine, you are no longer of any use to me. And you will never again be of use to anyone. <laughs> Master Man, quickly. Out to the emergency egg shoot. Let your fire destroy them and all traces of our lab. Fire cannot harm me. I shall stay and complete the Verdammt fool! You will obey me, or you answer to the Führer himself. Hacked, that is better. No fireman must see that. Only we two have escaped alive. It is better if anyone thinks Dr. Anderson is still alive. And on our hands. I only learned later what happened next. How the torch came to, the moments after they fled, leaving their own men to perish in the blazing holocaust. We were careless, overconfident. We're lucky that Nazi nut didn't put a hole in us. But he, if he thinks that a former, that a, even a four alarmer could kill the human torch, then he must have missed the recent spread on Toro and me in the Saturday evening post. Come to me, flames. Come to your master. Come to the human torch. And heaven help me, they did. And now I know one of the torch's most unique talents is his total mastery over all flames in his vicinity. Far from destroying him, they merely fled him and revived Toro as well. All that heat wasn't doing me much good, though, and there still was that little matter of a bullet lodged in my chest. So they leaped me skyward with me. The torch snuffed the flame in, my, in his arms so that I wouldn't be scorched. And that, to make a long story not too long, is how I wound up here. I like to shake that guy's hand. Then I'll douse my flames again, Click Cap, so you can do it. You're all heart, Pappy. What the torch? And Toro, we might have known you'd still be around. Hiya, bucko. It's been a while, Torch. Last spring, when wasn't it, when we met. First to rescue the boys from the Red Skull. In the Immortal Young Allies, number one, 1941. Not that I'm 100%, not that I'm 100 sure they really needed us. But if this master man is everything you and the ducks say he is, he's likely to make our fight with the skull look like a pleasure cruise. Cap, wait. Oh, Cap, wait. Something you just said about a cruise. Now I suddenly realize why Kriegun was in such a hurry to activate his master man. Stuart, you've got to get them to Chesick Peak Bay at once. Just heaven help me. You're right. It's the only possible answer. Quickly, all of you, come with me. You're not a second to lose. Part 3. The Submariner Strikes The blazing afternoon sun is already moving towards the horizon as four colorful forms burst forth from a prompt plane in Hampton Roads, Virginia to race across a busy highway towards the famous inlet known as Chesapeake Bay. If what Agent Stewart told us is true, 
the Nazis are planning to outdo their buddies at Pearl. It's true, all right, Torch. If you can't trust the FBI, who can you trust? I, I just pray we're not already too late. While speeding towards the sprawling naval base at Hampton Roads, uh, is or er, is wonder of wonders, a British battleship, and on the verge of the mysterious vessel. It won't be long now, sir. You made splendid time, Captain. Then, just then, directly ahead, a menacing shape abruptly lo looms. A Nazi sub here. Do do do. Hard the fools never expected the U-boat to penetrate so far into American waters, ja? Hardly, yet it is a fitting attack that I attack the ship here, almost within sight of the naval base itself. You are a fool, Kriekund. Why use this untrained masterman to perform such a glorious feat when a few well-paced torpedoes would no! Pfft. The honor of destroying that battleship and all aboard must go to me and me alone. Not to some idiot U-boat commander. To me, do you hear? Do not waste your precious strength, master man. You must act at once. And you as well as I know why. Yes, and it will give me pleasure to escape your slavish whimperings as well. Whoosh. Behold, English dogs. I teach you the Ormensch, and his name is Masterman. <laughs> At this point, it will probably, perhaps, not surprise the more jaded Marvel reader to see one of the battleship's deckhands suddenly strip for action as the Nazi nemesis attacks. Okay, Ratsy. Oh no! Okay, oh, that's Namor. Okay, Ratsy. <laughs> Unless, of course, he thought. Those pointed ears belong to a 1940s incarnation of Mr. Spock. You come on pretty strong against ordinary sailors. Now, let's see how you fared against Prince Namor. Prince Namor, the Submariner. Huh? I put all I had into that punch. Ooh, and it barely fazed you. I have heard of you, Fishman. But if that is the extent of your powers, you'd best return to the water. And lord over the oysters and the crabs. One wonders if the one master man ever heard the one about the tar baby. That's the Uncle Ramus? Or, I, I don't know. I hope that's not like, or, or I, I hope that's not race, or racist. Or, but anyway, yarn about the two predatory beasts toss a briar rabbit back into his natural uh, element, in his case a briar patch, and Namor's the life-giving sea which spawned him. Only differences in Joel Chandler Harris's tall tale, Briar Rabbit didn't bounce back with the power of a destroyer. Now, leather lad, what was it you said about oysters and crabs? Suck, shoo! You heard me? That still hurt, more than it should have. Why? There's my answer. Fire below decks, started by this guy's attack. Not to finish the job. The minute the water left, I left the water, it dried me out. But I'm acting emperor now of my undersea kingdom. Mustn't let a few hundred degrees Fahrenheit bother me. Ooh. So that's related in this issue's special comic section. See page 32, Roy. You are stronger than I heard, Submariner. But the victory shall still be mine. Spoon. Completely dehydrated now, Namor yet battles on against one of the heights of his physical powers. When suddenly, hold on, Namor, the Marine's about to land, and we'll soon have this situation well in hand. The torches again, and the sword called Captain America. I knew it. I knew it. Everybody gets a free plug except me. Well, I'm getting into this action if I have to... Ugh. Bucky! You're in luck, mister. If you hurt that boy, save your pity for yourself, swine. It's, it's no use, Poppy. Oh, it's no use, Poppy. Don't I know it. He's still immune to mere flame. But not to an uppercut, Torch. 
especially when we hit him high. And lo! One more, son, just for kicks. Go get him, Cap. We got him on the ropes. You naive clowns. I'd possess all the power Captain America ever had, and much more besides. Look! You merely hunt here later to die at the hand of... Masterman, holy you fool, accomplish your mission and flee. Your time is running out. No, Masterman does not flee from anyone, from anything. Glad to hear that, Nazi, because that means I get another crack at you. Don't you see? Don't you realize? I am the Masterman. Nothing can stop me. Not fire, not water, no. Not, no, no. Even as I speak, I can feel myself growing suddenly weaker. Then Kreekun was telling the truth. That means I must use my last remaining surge of power to escape. I should have um, said this earlier. I should have said this earlier when um, Master Man was introduced. But Master Man is very similar to the DC, well, Fawcett character, created by Fawcett, but owned by DC. Character Captain Nazi. I'm pretty sure like they're pretty much identical characters. And... Captain Nazi came out in the 1940s, and this guy came out in 1970s, so I don't, I don't know, but my plagiarism, but he's getting away, Cap. Amazing. He kicked off so hard, he's practically flying. That Navy launch. Let's go, lad. I'm with you, pard. Crack. In their zeal, Cap and Bucky have forgotten an equally sinister threat, the lurking U-boat, but perhaps they can afford... To, as long as Submariner and the torches don't. Mando torpedoes! We must complete the mission ourselves! Are you ready, water rat? Are you ready, water wat, rat? Ready, firebug? Okay, Toro, let's fly with the fireballs, fast! When we're finished, they won't be able to submerge. Oh, they'll submerge all right, Pappy. They just won't come up again. Yet, as even as the unbelievable heat turns crop rot steel... Into liquid butter. Fire! Poosh! An instant after firing, the surface launched tinfish disappears beneath the waves and race towards the idled battleship. But the submariner is waiting. Now, this is a little more up my alley. A couple of baby sharks who lost their way. Now, now, don't cry, little sharkies. Uncle Namor will send you back home. To Mama! Poosh! As and as the mortally wounded U-boat sinks slowly in the east, damage HMS Duke of York steams proudly on towards its goal, the naval base at Hampton Roads, the goal it once never, or seemed it might never reach. While ashore, a panic-stricken master man, no longer sure of his invincible strength, no longer able to leap even short of a building with any number of bounds, Blust blunders blindly through the afternoon traffic, his destination unknown, his thoughts muddled. The chemical must get more of it somehow, before it's too late. What the? Out of my way, little man! Shh! And for him, he leaves a trail which could be followed by an Askinmatic's club scout. Look, he went that way, Cap, but he's still fast and speeding like a bulldozer. I never said where we're going on after I'm on foot, son. Moments later, a commandeered auto in. Let's rip her, fella. Follow that trail of bustered bumpers, and don't spare the horses. Not far ahead, Master Man finds even his ground speed swiftly decreasing, and his panic growing apace. This can't be happening to me! It can't! This is the way it was, always was before. Psh! I was always weak. The weakest man in my local Nazi band. That is why Kriegun stopped me out. He said he wanted to duplicate the original Project Rebirth. And it worked. It worked. But now, I'm like I was again. Just like I was. I wouldn't brag about it if I were you. Got to get out of here. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hit the original 98-pound weakling. But for you, I'll make an exception. Abandoning all pretense of battle, now the once muddy Ubermensch takes to flight. But if his britches have now grown too big for him, so it will seem have his, have his hobnailed jackboots. Ugh! 
but don't hit me again, please. Don't worry, cowardly lion. I'm all through beating up on some buddy half my size. Then maybe I can... Take it from me, Blondie. You can't. You're not half my size. And this is for that kick in the head you gave me. Oof. I think he's down for the count, lad. You think? I know. A second starstruck commandeered car, and minutes later the colorful threesome arrives at Hampton Roads. Submariner in the torches! Did you fix that Nazi shot sub? What did you think, little boy blue? Then my mission's completed, and I can head for home. What mission, Namor? Say, what were you doing on that ship anyhow? I was asked to be there. Incognito by British intelligence. Which is more than I'm betting you glory hounds were. Don't get up with me, uppity with me, flounder face. I warmed your hide before and... Yeah? So how come I don't remember it then? Now you look, you two. Make em look. No talking forest fire's going to... Whoa, both of you, whoa! Forest fire, oh? Huh. Gentlemen, please. Gentlemen, please. Welcome... Welcome ashore, sir. What? Uh-oh. They, they said you were aboard the Duke of York, sir. You, Duke of York, sir. But I guess we, we didn't really believe it. Till now. Now that you do, is it too much to ask that you save your formidable firepower for the Axis and stop wasting it on each other? Yes, Cap Torch, it's true. Gwilts could have persuaded me to leave my own subsea kingdom. To make sure he crossed the Atlantic safely. To preserve his own empire. Who but the Prime Minister of Great Britain, Winston Churchill? Yes, yes, Prince Namor. And you have done a splendid job. Splendid. All of you have. But the real task is yet to do. And as only a few officials know in advance, I have come here to confer with President Roosevelt on how best to deal with the common foe. As Krieg Hearn Hund learned... So he tried to destroy you. Yes, well, that's the risks one takes war, you know. Hell, as they say. I must be off, but I implore you. Swear to me that you'll shelve your own petty squabbles for the duration. Surely, until our two nations are ready to invade Hitler's conquered continent, this fortress Europa, you five shall act as our own unofficial invaders, eh? Yes, yes, of course you shall. So Winston Churchill came up with the name. That's how the name Invaders came about. So farewell, gentlemen. We shall meet again. I trust in Berlin. To the White House driver. And hurry, please, I have things to do. Who can argue with a guy like that? Who'd want to? Then, thus with these casual words, the Invaders are born and their battle cry shall ring in the ears of the Nazi conquerors until the day they drink deep from the cup of defeat. Look out, Axis, here we come! Next, who or what is brain drain? Meanwhile, by bonds. And that's the end of that story. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. And thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.